you know what? The two pieces of info I gave you don't coincide, so I need to make sure the two pieces of information uh, go together. So this one will give you a different A, right? Uh, this one will give you an A uh, 40 divided by A5. So the piece of info I need to give you here, the time, either I'm going to have to change the V final or the V initial or the distance or, you know, one of them so that the two don't uh, disagree with each other. So what should I give you for the time? Let's say uh, keeping all the others the same. Now let's change the T. If I give you all the correct info, then they should all agree, right? So you could put here 1.2 over here, 1.2, and it's like now we're going backwards. You know the A, so what should the T be? T should be 40 over 1.2, right? Which is what? Okay, so 26 with a 6 and a bar over it. So if I give you the info here, 26 with a 6 bar over it. A second. So that info coincides. So this is the kinematics approach. We did the, we did the two equations. The two equations should agree, right? Now, having solved for the A, we can put it back here, solve for the force of the engine, right? 33 point. Let's change the info here. 33 point. Okay, so now, now we can solve for the force of the engine minus mg sine theta. Okay, now mg sine theta, uh, the, in this case, the mg is already given to you because the weight of the car is given, which is uh, 3,000 pounds. That is its mg, right? So F engine is minus 3,000 uh, sine of uh, 20 minus mu k, which is 0.3 times the normal force. And the normal force is uh, mg cosine 20, right? So the normal force is mg cosine of 20 is equal to ma. Now what's the mass of the car? In the British system, the, the weight is given as 3,000 pounds, so we divide that by 32 to get the mass. And that will give you a slugs, right? So, uh, and then the A is given, which is 1.2. We found it. 1.2. So that's it. 1.2, 3,032, so on, so on. We know everything. So now for, solve for the force of the engine. Okay. Tell me what you get there. Now, while you're working on that, let me now set up the the work energy way of solving this problem. Okay. And then, if you see a problem like this on the test, which method are you supposed to use? Work energy, work energy. Next test is work energy. Forget Newton. He died a long time ago. All right. No, just kidding, just kidding. Okay. okay. But on the side, you could do Newton's law. Check your answer, you know, see if they both give you the same, the same answer. Okay. But you have to remember, the Newton's law, when, remember how I had the Newton's law equation here, then I used kinematics? The problem with Newton's law is what if the acceleration is not constant? Then you can't use kinematics to help you find A. You can't use those four equations, right? But can you still use uh, work energy if the acceleration of the car is not constant? Yeah, because work energy only cares about initial velocity, final velocity. They don't, it doesn't care about if the acceleration is constant or not, you see? 
So uh, work energy is a little more general, a little more, uh, you don't have to worry about using those uh, laws of kinematics, those four uh, laws. Okay, so the work energy way then would be What did you guys uh, get for force of the engineer? Probably a big, huge number, right? Anyone got it? One nine eight four point two eight, and that would be pounds. So that's how much force the engine has to supply to to cause this motion to happen. So, okay, so now let's do the work energy method. Work total external on the car must equal to change of its kinetic energy, okay? So what are the different forces doing work on the car, okay, as it's going up? Well, the force of the engine is doing work, right? So that's work of the force of the engine plus the friction is doing negative work, right? The friction always likes to do negative work. Always, always, always. It's never positive. You see? And then what else? Is anything else doing work? Is the normal force doing work? Well, let's put it now and then answer the question. Work by the normal force. And then what other force is there? The, for, the work due to the weight, mg. And then change in kinetic energy is half m v final squared minus half m v initial squared. Okay? So now, work done by the force f. Remember, the work is the integral of f dot dr. But in this case, we don't need to integrate anything because the, we're assuming here that the force is more or less constant. So uh, the problem is asking us to find the average force. We don't need to worry about if the force is changing as a function of distance or anything. So in this case, the work is just simply the force times the displacement uh, along the uh, incline, right? FD is the work, and the angle is uh, zero. So what's the wor uh, work by friction? The work by friction is the force of friction. It's uh, ne negative this way, negative mu k n, okay? And then the displacement is forward. So the displacement is this way, d. So negative mu k and d. And again, we don't need to integrate it because the force of friction is constant also. Okay. How about the work by the normal force? n times d. Right? Wrong. It's a trick. I tricked you here. Okay, what is the work by the normal force? Zero, exactly, never nd. Okay, why? Why is it zero? Someone says zero. Why is it zero? It's perpendicular, yeah. The normal force is perpendicular to the displacement. Remember, work is the dot product of F times D which is Fd cos theta. So whenever a force is perpendicular to a displacement, it doesn't do any work. And the normal force is always perpendicular to the way something moves. The, uh, you, know, you know, so let's imagine a weird kind of inclined plane, you know like this, kind of like this, like a roller coaster ride. Imagine a train is going on a, a roller coaster ride up and down, up and down, up and down. Okay? When the, when the car is over here, the normal force is like that. When the car is over here, the normal force is like that. When the car is over here, the normal force is like that. The, the displacement is like that. The displacement is like that. The displacement is like that. So the instantaneous displacement and the instantaneous normal force are always perpendicular, you see? So the normal force never does work, never. Work by normal force